The Northern Elders Forum announces that the North won't vote based on sentiment as it did with Buhari. And as regards the Electoral Amendment Bill, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and their governors are asking lawmakers to either override the president's veto or delete areas of complaints. This is Post Politics. I am Mary Anako. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Northern Elders Forum has announced that it will only support a presidential candidate who has the capacity to address the nation's socioeconomic and security problems, irrespective of where the person comes from. The elders say they will no longer vote for a candidate based on sentiments as they did for President Muhammad Buhari in 2015, describing the incumbent as a disappointment to the entire country. The NEF's Director of Publicity and Advocacy, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, dis dismissed calls by some groups that the presidency should be left for the South, describing such attestations as command democracy. He said, and I quote, the not support for Buhari in 2015 and 2019 was a mistake which should not be repeated in 2023, end of course. Now, joining us to discuss this is, of course, the uh, Director of Publicity and Advocacy for the Northern Elders Forum, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Hello, hi. Thank you very much. Great. Um, walk us through why you have decided as, the forum, as a forum to take this position as to 2023, you're saying that you're not going to vote based on sentiment. What exactly do you mean by that? And does it mean that you had been doing this uh, in previous election years based on sentiment? Well, a lot of voters um, vote on, on sentiment all over Nigeria. Um, right now, the people who are making the against the law, against common sense, against the basic principles of democracy, that um, only it's Nigerians from the southern part of the country should be voted for, are acting on a sentiment. Their position is not supported by law, it's not supported by the demands and the challenges of the country. And it's certainly not going to be supported by, by anybody, not by northerners, by even their politicians. Uh, and so there's nothing wrong with voting on sentiment. But sometimes well, that, that sentiment should be um, uh, informed by interests that are, are wider than some of the considerations we're, we're hearing from the southern part of the country. It has to be an ethnic candidate. It has to be a Christian. Um, he, he has to come from the southern part of the country, he has to be Yoruba, he has to be people, he has to be from one part of, uh, from the south south. Um, so these are, these are sentimental and negative. That's all I saw, we saw, so this is pretty. The Nigeria of 2019 has no business electing a president who would have, uh, the whole mass of an ethnic identity, a religious identity, um, uh, and, and quite possibly uh, a major breach in terms of the platform. The Nigerian president should be elected by all Nigerians. He should be uh, the product of the constitutional demand that all parties would be free to kill their candidates. And all citizens should be free to elect who they want. If you compromise this, you will produce a sectional president, and you are quite possibly end up with the third class person rather than the best out of all the lots that come out to ask for our support. This has always been our position. We haven't changed anything. We're just re emphasizing the fact that, as far as the North is concerned, um, even if we think uh, there ought to be a sentiment, we prioritize competence. We, we, we prioritize the uh, track record and we emphasize the fact that he or she must be accepted by all Nigerians. 
Okay. We must not be the product of ethnic uh, politics. Okay, let me take you back to 2014. Um, in 2014, there was a clamor that power must return to the north. And there was that sentiment of, oh, our son died, so um, we must complete his term. That was a valid, you know, sentiment at the time. Nobody kicked against it. In 2022 now, everybody's saying no rotation. Um, we only want competent, you know, people to run for that office. So, of course, the South is saying, well, there's been power rotation this whole time. Now it's our opportunity. Why are we saying that we no longer just want rotation? We want a competent person. Is, that, is it that there are no competent persons in the South? Because these are also the questions that are coming from those in the South. Let me ask you a question. When you said uh, that uh, power was returned to the law, who voters voted for a candidate against another candidate when he did vote. Nigerian voters. Nobody really returned anything. Nigerian voters preferred a candidate who happens to be President Buhari. So there's no such thing as uh, before the power voter, But the, before the right. voters voted, these candidates were actually put forward, obviously because, again, yes. I, I use the word loosely, sentiment, and of course, because of the power rotation that has been in play for so many years. There has no power, in, there has no big rotation in place. CPP, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, but when we say things, um, we need to be sure about what we're talking about. Only one party in this entire country, out of all the parties that exist, CPP, as rotation as, as, as a requirement, PDP. Not any other, not any other party. So don't say there's, there's nothing there. But was it kicked against? The as much as the PDP did have rotation, did the North, did the South, did anybody kick against that rotation plan that they had in place? If, you, if, you, if it they were did. a problem, why was it adhered to? If it was just a PDP plan, why was the PDP able to continue in that power rotation and unhindered? And everyone that was presented who won on that platform was accepted. I will answer your question, but let me take you back to the expression you asked. When you say competence should be prioritized, it includes everybody who has come out to save their community, including people from the South. Mm -hmm. There are, it's quite possible that the most competent Nigerian out of all the lot, who is asking to be trusted with power will come from the South. The North we can vote for a Southerner. We are not saying absolutely only a Northerner is competent enough to be president. We are saying prioritize competence. Don't prioritize the region they come from. Don't prioritize the ethnic group. Don't, don't put this kind of narrow uh, uh, negatives, negative qualities ahead of the need for all. A Nigerian to emerge and solve our problems will be accepted by everybody and that can pull this country away from where it's at. So that's the second, that's the question to the, the question you asked. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this thing, this rotation thing, this is there's nobody who can become president in this country with people relying on only the support of one party. As it is, the Constitution has already made it mandatory to be a president who need to enjoy the support of the whole part of the country. That's the law, that's the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And anything can you do to compromise that is a fundamental breach of the Constitution. What it will do is it produce a person, assuming it works, because it will not work. And that's why we said this is man democracy. It is this meaningful. Governors, the routine governors uh, from the southern part of the country, Chuma, met for a few hours, came out and released a statement saying, Power must stand together. And we thought we had made that position very clear. This is crazy, you're a politician. You must know. You are not impressed with anybody. Maybe there's a gallery there they are playing to. And some people in the south will clap. You know, and say, ah, our governors are pleasant their money. We were not impressed with the northern country. Because first of all, we know they don't stand on the law. They don't stand on anything other than playing to a very damaging, very dangerous country. Now, a few days ago, leaders of the South South and the Middle and some elements of the Middle Belt got together and again they said, no political party should feel a northerner. 
Imagine this. No political party should deal a northerner. And if they do, no, first, no southerner will vote for that country. No party for that party. Now, this is very simple. If these politicians who know that you cannot be president and also understand the fact that you also need the vote to support your candidate, they must understand the damage that these uh, Adeba and George, Black, and uh, the Pandev, and uh, the Middleton Forum are doing today. Because all they will do is to get voters in the North to dig in, bring out their copies of the Constitution, read their copies sections of the Constitution, and say, show me where it says that you can compel all political parties to field on this governance. And assuming it can, even though we'll be cowed enough and considered enough to say, okay, okay, we have to be a southern uh, candidate because uh, uh, so, so elderly people in the southern part of the country are staring. What, what that means is that all the voters in the northern part of the country will line up only to elect a southern candidate. They are all right. To decide to choose and or for a northern candidate has been compromised and so has been denied. Now, who would accept it? Who would accept it? But, but, but can you really blame the southerners if they... This is just a campaign. I don't see them putting a gun to the head of... And I'm not in any way holding brief for them, but I'm just asking. Just as every other person has campaigned at some point or the other to say power must return to the north, uh, whether it was constitutional or not, they were canvassing for power to be given to people in that zone. And if they're saying, well, we want political parties to do this, the political parties do not necessarily have to do what the, the, the likes of um, Clark are saying, but they are obviously pushing that they want a, gov a president from the South. What, what, what is wrong with that? This is not the first time zones are canvassing for somebody from their area to be for, uh, you know, put forward as president. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? There's absolutely nothing wrong with any such thing of like that. Uh, we want one of our own to be president. Absolutely nothing. That's one. Two, we have said a sovereigner can, should, can be the president of the country, and it makes sense taking the constitution of the Federal Republic of the State. The constitution says to become a president, your party must feed you, and voters must give you majority of votes, and you must accept. So it, it's not as if we're saying no one else has the right to have to be president. But politicians understand this. Maybe you and I don't agree they are thinking what this is about. It's about doing the hard work that some people don't want to do. You want to be president of Nigeria, you work within your country to be called the candidate. That's not a difficult thing. It's difficult to become a president of this. Then you have to compete against other candidates, other parties, and convince the voters to vote for you. Those voters who come from Medjugorje, they will include people from Kosti, they will include people from Kosti, they will include people from So, this kind of uh, narrowing scope basically damages the chances of people from particular parts of the country. Because what you do is you say, my choice is more important than yours, and therefore you must do what I want to do. And you can't do that. Okay, let's go back to something that you said. Um, about the North having the vote and that you would not accept to play second fiddle or second position come 2023. Um, that was, you know, um, many, a lot of people took that with, you know, a pinch of salt. Some people misinterpreted it, but you're here. Um, you can help us understand what that meant because there are people who felt that that was a threat of sorts to those who were pushing for a southern presidency. You're very polite. People say it was arrogant, it was stupid, it was uh, uh, a, a ruler's mentality. You are being very polite. When I said no, I was not accept to play the computer, I meant that no one has a right to circumscribe the right of governors aspire to be president of this country after playing the time, to be candidates of their parties, if their parties make them candidates. Or to be voted for by other Nigerians. Because if you do this, we ask a country. You consider all of us think we to the role of voters. And you say you vote only a certain candidate. All of you can vote. 
What does he very much, but no, it was good enough. We will not accept it. Not what I'm saying. I'm thinking people just went to town with it. Because when you say we will not accept we don't want the South to play the country either. It's not our place to say the South must give it to the North a right that they don't say. No, no, no. It is wrong. If, if people don't understand it, if the people don't understand it, what this is simply means is that they are so deeply involved in ethnic and regional and religious politics that they will not even open their ears to listen. So I'll repeat again. The North has the same right as the South to have candidates from the North and the South to be fielded. The Northerners in Nigeria who have voted will decide who becomes president. The danger the game we are playing now is that you could end up compounding the already existing fragile and dangerous situation, uh, security situation with all the conflicts about political power. But, but, but all we of these, the, all of, I'm sorry to talk over you, all of these sentiments that you're making reference to, the divisions that you're making reference to, have always been there. How long did it take the, the, the Northern Elders Forum to realize that this is what has been playing out to now wake up and say, well, no, we no longer care about these sentiments. We now want competence uh, over everything else. And I'm not in any way saying we should play down on that because we need that uh, to be able to determine who becomes the president, even though sometimes that takes a back seat. But the North has been playing that card alongside with every other region in the country. So is, is it that you're waking to the responsibilities of, of, as elders, as leaders in your region, to make sure that you put an end to it? Or is this just another ploy of sorts come 2023? It's a question. I'm just curious. No ploy. There's no game that we're playing that is not obvious to other Nigerians. Um, and uh, we, we know, it, this is not about sentiment. When... When some people in the north said they preferred northern candidates, they are doing exactly what people in the south are doing today. There's nothing wrong with that. The bottom line, this is why we have the democratic process. It ultimately is the democratic process that will be to become the Nigerian president. When you have lazy politicians, people who are too lazy to do the real hard work, they real lifting, go and convey who from, if you are a southern candidate, go to the north. Northern candidate go to the south, convince them that you are the best, convince them to trust you, um, show them your program, show them what you will do about uh, security in the north, about poverty, uh, about uh, stability, and show them, tell them what you're going to do about uh, everyday things in the south, tell them what you're going to do about crimes all over the country, convince them that's the real hard work people don't want to do. Let old people fall at the and bring the politics. In the uh, presidency, uh, bring it, <laughs> of course, to get you the presidency. And we've been trying to get people to understand it for the last five people. I think we've got about five or five uh, people from the northern part of the country who said they want to run. And we have not come out with to say to the people of the south, look, it's our northerners, it makes the president. Hmm. Because we, we have demanded that even for Northerners would be very competent above everything else. And we said on the 15th of January, just three days ago, competent Northerner is not enough. Mm. Even if you are a Northerner, we would size you as the criteria would have been. We want to know who you are. We want to know what you stand for. We, don't know, we want to know what you bring to the presidency. We want to ask you specific questions. What are you going to do about our policy? What are you going to do about our institute? What are you going to do about the budget? What are you going to do about kidnapping? What are you going to do about the millions of millions? Thank you for raising that. that. For Thank you for raising the issue of insecurity because I was going to come to that. Um, we saw the protest that happened. Um, of course, the North is saying enough is enough. We saw young people, even though a couple of them were arrested for um, you know coming out to protest. Uh, but you, I remember, the, there was a, a report saying that the North regrets voting the president into office. Um, and, of course, you're also talking about what you have been experiencing for the past eight years. Why do you feel that way? The presidency, on the other hand, has said that they're doing their best to deal with the level of insecurity both in the Northeast and in the Northwest. Well, that's just enough. 
that's a simple thing. Um, regarding people who would defend their administration, natural, no matter how bad the administration is, they are about to get a hand to the whole next day. That uh, the security situation is not as bad as it is. But tell them to go to Zamfara. Tell them to go to Niger State. Tell them to go to some parts of Sokoto and, uh, and teach a tent and spend four days. Don't go there. They won't. We are not creating fiction over our lives. In the north, our lives have never been worse. And we don't want to continue living the life, running around and being ISIS. We have enough problems in the north. We don't want to elect another president, if he be possible, the northerner, who would continue from where President Buhari is from. And we certainly don't want a southerner who will come forward and say, I'm not I'm the southerner, it is my son, it is our son to move. Uh, so you move away and, and, and give me Nigeria to run. We would not cheat. Sorry, sir, you're not going to be a southern president, you're going to be my president. We demand to go before we vote for you. What you're going to do about insecurity, what you're going to do about poverty, what you're going to do about Boko Haram, what you're going to do about bandits. If we are not that sharp, like you, you are prepared enough to be a Nigerian president, we'll look for somebody else. There is no apology here at all. So you're saying that the job ahead of whoever takes over in 2023 is cut out for them. So uh, it's going to be a tough call. It's not going to be business as usual? It had better be a tough call. Let me see. It has nothing to do. It's not just about the law. It's about their country. Mm. This is why I'm personally disappointed. How cheap, how cheap do you think I get right? Look at, look at, look at the field now. Look at the kind of people who are coming out of from the ground. How low do they think this country has defended? Some of them have absolutely nothing to offer for the president. And yet they are coming out daily and saying, I want to be president. I want to be president. This is an insult to this. Quickly before I let you go, because my time is up. Um, so what is the North going to do? I'm talking about the NEF here. Um, because it's not enough to say this is what we want. How do you educate the people in, in terms of money politics, in terms of sentiment? How do they get rid of that? It's not about I'm just sorry, a, a group I'm of sorry. people. I, I apologize, but I can't tell you very well. You have to speak. I'm to going to ask talk. again. Can you hear me now? Yes. So I'm asking, what is the, the NEF going to do going forward? Because we have a few months before 2023 in educating and rebranding the minds or the mindsets of people in terms of money politics, sentiment, uh, Muslims, re, uh, Christian tickets, and, and all of that, uh, as opposed to what you are demanding for now. Because it's not enough for a group of people to say this is what we want. But then when the election comes, it's business as usual. Well, we, 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 we there are a lot of we have we, we recommend it. You know, we met a um, few days ago, and we released. Okay, I, 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 I hope you've seen it, because we addressed the need for the this president to ascend to a whole battery of things which are being proposed in the electoral act. We believe that he should ascend to them. And if he is not going to do that, then the national uh, is provided. Okay. Next, they said they would not. Then we should salvage what is left. Let him take what he wants. And we'll wait for another president who will approve, who will, who will support major changes in the electoral process. Okay. That's the first thing. Secondly, we want someone who will emerge, who will, who will command enough, um, enough support across the length and breadth of Nigeria. So we will willingly really support him. We don't want a candidate who will buy votes. Okay. We don't want a candidate who will send thugs to break ahead at the polling booth. We want to reduce the pollution of violence. Above all, above all, we want Nigerians to look at 2023 as a major turning point in this country. Okay, we, we have to go. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kim Baba Ahmed, for speaking with us. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you for making me a guest. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we discuss the options given to lawmakers on what to do regarding the Electoral Act bill. And of course, the PDP is talking about zoning. They have been behind closed doors. What is the plight of the PDP also in Lagos State? Stay with us.